It turns out that the other way of leveraging integration and configuration is through the use of so-called collections of objects, they say, right? And these will be developed and be referred to by different names depending on the type of programming language you're working with, right? But simply put, you'll find some programming languages refer to these collections of objects as being packages, right? Uh, libraries, the java.lang package, the java.utils package. I don't know if you remember these. The java.swing, is that package or library? java.swing java package, remember those things, right? Um, so anyways, um, so these are the, the, the naming, right? Is programming language specific. And, and in fact, you find that some languages will refer to, so the reference to a mod in, a, in, a, in, in language A may not, may not be perceived to be the same thing in language B. A module in, 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 in Python may not necessarily be classified as a module in, in Java, for instance. Right? But, but anyway, the, the, simply put here, we're saying that when it comes to these collections of objects, we're looking at uh, these existing code constructs that we reuse as we are programming, right? When we are writing the source code. This is different from standalone applications, right? There's, generally, there's very little programming involved here at this stage, right? The reuse is specific to just configuring or modifying an already existing application. In this case, though, we're looking for specific code constructs, modules, packages, right? Uh, what else are there? Libraries, they say. Um, anyways, so, uh, yeah, so typically so-called programming languages will be associated by different types of collections, right? Um, and we use, we use these, uh, these so-called collections of objects as we are writing code. And we saw this in 2010, right? String package, J option pen. The interesting thing is that uh, you may not have, you may not fully appreciate what was going on then because most of the packages you were using are inbuilt packages, right? These are packages that you almost certainly use. Like you will find yourself manipulating strings or reading files or writing to files, right? Which is why the java.io comes by default with your SDK, right? You know, remember when they said you, for you to program in Java, you don't just uh, download and install the Java runtime environment, but you must also install what? JDK, they said, right? You, you're installing two things there. But anyways, um, uh, again, I already mentioned this. Uh, the naming may be a bit confusing, but the idea is the same, right? Um, so, so what we are classifying as collections of objects uh, really um, can be considered to be, and I, by the way, I, I combined frameworks and packages but, uh, and libraries and modules, but they're somewhat different here. But, but what we may consider to be collections of objects could be modules, libraries, or packages. Um, typically what you download would be like a library or something in most instances, in most programming languages. And then through that library you have access to the things that you need. Right? Um, anyways. And then tied to, because remember we are discussing this part here, right? Decided to include frameworks here, but I think we need to be very careful um, not to be tempted to consider frameworks as being collections of objects, but I suppose they can be, right? Uh, maybe you can consider them as a separate entity. I don't know, we'll have to think about this, but for now we can just, we can just say they are, they are considered to be collections of objects, right? So you have an approach where you're using, you know, libraries, packages as you're writing code, but it turns out that there are instances where you might want to have a starting point, a foundation, right? Uh, depending on what it is you're building. Uh, you can take advantage of so-called frameworks, right? So pre-existing structures or scaffolds, right? Are you used as a starting point? So instead of, if you're building a web application, instead of writing, or you're creating all those funny folders where you're saying the backend code is going to go in this folder, in the folder called scripts or backend, the frontend code is going to go into a, um, uh, a folder called frontend, you know, the CSS files are going to go into CSS, JavaScript files are going to go into JS and whatnot. What you can do is you download a framework. And this framework, one of the things that you would do is once you install it, um, there's like an easier way of creating the project, right? Um, so the boilerplate code will be created for you. In fact, some frameworks are so good that you can literally run an application. You have like some application, some startup application that can run in the browser. And then you just start editing it. It's saving time, right? 
Anyways, um, again, these would generally be used when you're writing source code. Uh, the, the libraries, modules, and packages, and you typically use these things when you're performing commonly performed tasks or operations. Uh, I don't know if in 2010 you got to a stage where you were introduced to how you parse XML or something, but you could be parsing XML or parsing JSON files, right? It's a common operation. If you're building an application, uh, in all likelihood you will be interacting, or the application is going to be interacting with third party systems, right? You will send a request and you get back a response. Um, so you need uh, a library that will make it a lot easier for you to write the code that's going to enable you to process the response coming in, right, from the third party system, for instance. Um, creating database connections, commonly used application, right? The vast majority of these uh, software uh, applications we create, especially web-based applications, will be database-driven. If it's database-driven, at some point, you're going to have to create a connection, right, to the database that you're using. So if you're, if you're using MySQL, you need to create a MySQL connection. Yeah? If you're using uh, SQL Lit or SQL Lite, they say, uh, or PostgreSQL, you will need to create a connection, right? So instead of you starting from scratch, you can use a library that helps to, there's a course that I teach actually, uh, I can showcase an example, right, uh, of, um, I hope I'll be able to access that information here, but, uh, but uh, there's a course uh, I teach and we were, we were actually looking at uh, some of these things here. Um, let me see if I can find what I'm looking for here, three. Uh, so, um, the weird example here, but uh, this is Kyodit 3 uh, Unza DB connection or something. So if, if you look at uh, this um, database, right, this is a sort of schema it has. If I check the tables, it only has one table. But the thing is, if, I'm, if I want to create an application that's, that I'm going to um, link to this database so that I can write to this database so that I can read to this database, right, what I would have to do at some point is I would have to create a connection. Right, so um, in Python, for instance, um, and I know I have this library installed, there's a library called, before I do this actually, what I would do is, I would install a library, right? Um, I would install a library, pip3. Uh, I would install a library called sqlit, right? Three or something. Um, let's see if it's just sqlit or something. pip3 install. I think I did here, but it's already installed in sqlit. Install. Probably already installed, I think. It's already installed, I know. Or maybe it comes by default or something. But bottom line is, I, can, I know it's installed. I'll come here, right? And then I'll say import, right? I'm importing something that I need to gain access to. I've downloaded this, I've installed them, or I've, I've actually associated the library with my project. I would import the package, right? SQLit 3, right? And then from here, I will do fancy things like connect to a database, right? Create a database connection, you know? Um, and then, well, I guess, I mean, if people want to say, well, but Lighton, you didn't, uh, you didn't show us. Uh, how do we know that what you showed us is actually true here, right? Um, we, can, we can try and see if we can quickly create a connection to this database here. Um, uh, and uh, hope to, hope that, uh, <coughs> I need to specify the database name, right? Uh, I only have a directory there, so I need to copy this thing, uh, paste it here, and then, uh, I don't know why it's, this thing is creating an, oh, v, uh, connect, or something is equal to that, right? I don't know why this thing is, uh, is refusing today, Let's see here. No, it's not. <coughs> anyway, I don't know why this thing is uh, refusing all its part. I don't know if I've... Uh, so it's a kind of open database file, but anyway, you, you understand the point, right? I can... I wish I could showcase this anyway. I can create a database connection and connect to this, right? Um, and then, that way, um, I don't have to waste time I don't have to waste time uh, figuring out how am I going to connect to this database. 
The next time somebody comes to me and says, well, uh, the person I'm developing the application for, well, we don't use SQLite in our organization. We use uh, Microsoft SQL Server. All I do is I download the appropriate library that will enable me to create a connection to that sort of database, and then I just change the code, right? Anyways, uh, so there are a number of packages that will come out of the box, a number of them. This is why you're able to use, uh, you don't have to download the math package, or it comes by default. So all you do is you just say import math, and then you have math dot whatever it is you want to access. Um, so just quickly, right, to showcase, uh, I guess, some places where you find these frameworks. Um, now that we understand uh, instances where we use frameworks and where we use, but sorry, instances where we use libraries and where we use libraries, depending on the sort of programming language that you use, um, there are repositories where you can get these frameworks from. Uh, for instance, I work a lot with JavaScript, um, and so I will get these libraries from NPM. Um, and the beauty is they're actually very nice um, desktop applications and terminal-based applications that you can use to actually download and install the packages or associate those packages with your, um, with your, uh, with your project directory, right? Um, so just an example showcasing JavaScript code where I, I get a desired library from here, right? Um, and then I would, when I'm writing code, I would have to have import statements, right? Specifying what sort of library I want to associate to my project. And then once I do this, similar to Java, I can then gain access to whatever classes or methods are accessible in these things I'm importing. That way I'm more effective at what I'm doing, right? Uh, so an example there. But there's more, right? So this is JavaScript. If you're using Python, um, there's a, uh, this is supposed to be, uh, uh, I think, PyPy or something, not the, the wrong URL out there, right? But there's a, there's, a, there's a place where you can actually get uh, these packages specific to Python. So if you're writing, if you're creating software using the Python programming language, right, you'd find your packages here. Um, again, there's a, there's a, uh, nice applications that you can install. You don't have to open your browser and go here and search for the package, unless if you want to look up detailed information about the package, like when was it last updated, or how many downloads is it associated with, all those things, you then access the web interface. But if not, you just use uh, terminal-based commands to uh, install the packages. Like uh, my failed attempt to install uh, SQL lit here. I, I don't know, I understand why this is not failing here. But um, I know that, something wrong with my computer, I suppose, I don't know. Um, let's try matplotlib. There's something wrong, I think, with my computer, because there's clearly, uh, everything is failing, I think. Anyway, so, so you, would, uh, you have very nice interfaces, like what I was showing you here, right? If I want to install a Python package, I don't go here to download, I'll just use pip myself, I'll prepare pip, right? Um, and then I'll download it and install it. Um, and then I'm, I'm able to call it within code, right, and reuse um, all the modules associated with that library. So here, again, I'm showcasing an example, right, of how I would be using libraries and modules associated with Python. The syntax is, that if you've noticed, most of these programming languages, right, the way that you, you actually use certain things is common, right? In Java, it's import. In Python, it's import. In JavaScript, it's import, right? I guess it's an intuitive name. You, can, you know what you're doing, so you're importing something, you know? Um, anyways, uh, I wish I could showcase some of these. I don't know what's wrong with my computer here. Yeah, so I mean, this is uh, packages, right? But there is more. Um, sometimes programmers would actually uh, share these packages on platforms like GitHub, right? So uh, places like GitHub is where you find generic libraries for all types of languages. Yes, sir? Yes. Sorry, yeah? Come again, what's the question? Mm -hmm. Ah, so it was my session that was messed up. Uh, sorry about that. If I if I have what? <laughs> sorry, uh, <laughs> so track that. Yes. 
Yeah, I don't know. I've never used that. But what does it do? For what? Okay. Don't create malicious software, right? Usually, yes, because uh, at some point when you create your application, the way that you assemble the application, right, will require that the libraries you are using are assembled together with application, right? Maybe in your Java or something. Uh, so you, generally, they would have to be like a lib folder somewhere, right? I don't know if they told you it's a lib folder. It's a, it's a pity that in 2010 you are using inbuilt libraries, but you'd have a lib folder. Otherwise, the person who would want to use that application will run into errors. It won't work, right? Especially way still if you are using a, a, an interpreted language or something. If it's a compiled language, you don't really have to worry because as you are compiling that uh, 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 software product that you've created, everything is going to be assembled for you, right? Because what you are sending to the other end is a .exe key. The dependency is there. I mean, uh, when it comes to libraries, it don't matter, right? So it has to be generated in the same folder. So there will be sub subdirectory or something, right? Is this making sense, uh, ladies and gentlemen? Hey, I'm, 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 I'm surprised as to why this didn't work, right? You know, you know, what, I, you know what I mean? Connection. Connect is equal to... <laughs> is, is this familiar code? Did you do this? Have you done this in, in, in the course with uh, Dr. Waliet? I'm sure you will do these things, I suppose. I don't know. D have you done this? Okay. What are you doing? <laughs> okay. Uh, what, what, uh, you're still looking at ERI diagrams or something? Have you looked at uh, the different normal forms and all those things? Ah, there we go. So finally, so there's something wrong with my session. So I can connect and do fancy things, right? Um, I can connect now. I'm, I'm happy that I can connect. So, so there you go, right? Um, I don't know if there's any other thoughts about libraries here. Very easy concept, something we can easily relate to. Right? The, the reuse takes place when you're writing code. And you go through a certain systematic process for you to use a framework, right? You must first of all download the framework, right? After you download the framework, as you are writing your source code, you import the libraries you're interested in. Once you import the libraries, you gain access to specific code constructs like classes, right? Or special variables from within the library. Um, is, is this making sense? Yeah. All right. Um, yes. Yeah, so it's a, I, I did say there was a, <laughs> a difference. No, really. So well, I'll, I'll use Python as an example, right? And, and I think it will make sense if I use now I'll use an example because I know it works. If we use Python as an example, um, a module is considered a code construct that provides you with the interface, right, to gain access to a specific functionality. A library will comprise of uh, different collections, like different modules in the case of Python, right? Um, and then uh, we ask the difference between a module and a library. Uh, well, uh, a, a package, this is a Java naming uh, convention. So a package in Python is synonymous to a, a library. Um, yeah, so I must use this example so that you understand. Look at this. Um, if I, and I don't have to read, if I, if I import, if I import something that I know has a lot of, if I import a library like pandas, right? If I look at the help file, they are clearly telling me here that this is a powerful data analysis and manipulation library for Python. But within pandas, well, actually I can do the same thing. Within pandas, what you'll notice is you have access to so many different things, right? I'm uh, saying a package content here, but you have access to so many different things, like classes, right? Um, and modules and, and functions, right? You know, uh, right? So, so the modules will provide you with, with the interfaces, right? That you'd need for you to access the functionality. Like if I wanted to read a CSV file, right? I would have to do something like pd.read, 
And then I specify the location of what I want to read. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, by the way, the j system.out.print line, right? There's likely a library, a built in standard library that facilitates you to gain access to that. Otherwise, you would have to, um, you would have to, to, to build that feature, that functionality from scratch. So instead of doing it from scratch, because it's something that's common, most people at some point in their code will have to print out things, right? To log things. So it's a standard library. You know? The uh, swing package, right? That's standard. Uh, because most people will end up building graphical uh, user interface based applications, for instance. Anyway, that's okay.